Okay, example two wants us to write a flow proof of theorem 2.5. Um, and to start, we're already running into some problems with Envision here. So if you look at the previous two slides, they use the converse to the corresponding angle theorem and then the converse to the alternate interior angle theorem, and they give you those two theorems. Okay. Um, they want us to use the converse to the uh, um, corresponding angle theorem to prove the converse to the alternate interior angle theorem, which is fine. But the entire point is that they have one of them as a postulate, and then we use that postulate to prove the other theorems. Um, and the postulate they have is the same side interior angle the converse to the same side interior angle theorem, but they didn't present that in the lesson yet. So um, everything we've said about theorems and postulates, um, we're just going to throw those out the window and we're just going to call them theorems from now, on, from now on out because Envision is enormously confusing and inaccurate uh, in their use of uh, theorems and postulates. Okay, so we're just going to call all of them theorems from now on out. Okay, and we're just going to do what they want us to do on these examples. So they want us to use the... Um, converse to the corresponding angle theorem um, to prove the all converse to the alternate interior angle theorem. All right. So we haven't done flow proofs yet. So again, they don't even give us any directions on this. Um, they just kind of throw you in there. Um, it's just, it's not good, but we're going to go with it. So um, it's really no different though than your two column proofs or your paragraphs proof. Um, you're just writing it a little bit different. Okay. So you start with your given. Okay. Um, we notice here we have vertical angles. One and three are vertical angles. So we can say angle one is congruent to angle three by the vertical angle theorem. So if we click on step one, um, they're going to put it below um, that one. And the reason is because we're going to combine these two. We're going to use both the information here. We're going to use the information from the given and the information that the vertical angles are congruent. Because um, if we notice here, angle one is congruent to two and angle one is congruent to three, so therefore, we know angle two and three are going to be congruent um, to each other. That's the transitive property. So by the transitive property, uh, we can say angle two is congruent to angle three. Okay. Um, and if you looked at your converse to the corresponding angle theorem, it says if uh, the corresponding angles are congruent, then the lines are going to be parallel. So since angle two and three are corresponding angles and they're congruent, we can then conclude by the converse to the corresponding angle theorem that L and M are parallel. So if we look at um, step three, uh, L and M are going to be parallel. Since the corresponding angles are congruent, um, the lines are parallel. Okay, and if you look at your triad, it's going to be very similar here. And again, they don't, th there's a number of things here. Um, one, they didn't write out the given and stuff and what you're trying to prove. They just said prove the converse to the same side interior angle postulate. Um, but, um, and, and they did this before they even introduced what the same side interior angle postulate was. So you have to look then on the next slide at what that actually is. And it says if the same side interior angles are supplementary, right? If the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two is 180, um, then the um, lines are going to be parallel. So what we want to show here is that the measure of angle one uh, plus the measure of angle two. Uh, um, it, well, we want to show that the lines are parallel using the fact that the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two equals 180. Okay, that's what we're assuming to start with. Okay, so if we look at our proof, and I'm just going to hit check answer, and we'll, we'll talk about theirs, what they wrote out. Okay. Um, so they put in an angle three here. Okay. And um, angle one and angle three, uh, those are a linear pair, so they're going to add them up to 180. So the linear pair theorem tells us the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 3 here. And if we put it in, 3. Okay, add up to 180. And then here, again, the given is the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 equals 180. Um, and again, you haven't seen the postulate yet. They haven't presented it to you. So I don't know how you're supposed to know that that's a given, but that's um, what it's going to be. And um, since you have uh, angle one is supplementary with angle two and angle one is supplementary with angle three, um, 
we can use the congruent supplements theorem okay um i'm sorry since angle two is supplementary with angle one and angle three is supplementary with angle one we can say that angle two and angle three are congruent by the congruent supplements theorem. since angle two and three are both supplementary with the same angle they're going to be congruent to each other okay and since uh, your corresponding angles are congruent we can again use the converse of the corresponding angle theorem to show that the lines are parallel um so yeah we're just going with with that hopefully that makes sense